is great to see you uh, this evening. Thank you for joining me. Uh, but it's been a very exciting, uh, kind of a roller coaster week uh, for me. Last Thursday, I got um or Wednesday, I guess, I got an, an invite from the executive director, basis Dr. Danahe, saying, "Let's have a meeting on um, high school." Now I've been told all year, no, not happening next year. And so we met. He said, "What do you want to do?" I said, "Oh, I want to do it. Like that's why I came. I came here." And uh, he said, "Okay, let's meet again Monday." So the the uh, executive leadership team met Monday with me, and we uh, did the. We had a. Uh, we decided we were going to go for it. We just wanted to make sure state was okay with it. State gave approval Monday late afternoon. I sent the message out Monday night. We met with all the kids uh, Tuesday morning. Uh, I sent the, the message out to families, if you want to stay, uh, stay, sign up to stay. And now we're here Thursday, just still a few days later, just a week basically after the whole process started. So um, for those of you that don't know my history, this will be the third startup program I've done in my career. Uh, I was involved in this as the science department chair of Oxford High School. That was a high school that opened first high school that that town even had. They didn't even have a high school, so I was involved in the startup for that. And then my uh, last position was as the startup principal of Westside Middle School Academy, which is a magnet school very similar to this school. And, you know, I um, I was excited to come here because of the opportunity to do uh, one, one more startup. I said, I think before I retire, I'm going to have one more startup. Now, I'm not retiring for like eight or nine years, so that that's a long way off for me, but I did want to do one more big project and uh, this is going to be at the uh, implementation of a high school. I always thought um, of the idea of a six through 12 experience for kids was such a good thing. The continuity, the ability to get to know teachers and, and teachers really getting to know students in a very deep and meaningful way was just an excellent way uh, to have education happen for students. And, um, and so that's what we're doing. We're gonna remain about the same size. We're, we're 600 now. We'll go up to about 800 total. So individual classes will get smaller, but the school will remain about the same size in the process. So I'm going to share with you today uh, the presentation I did for the students. They'll give a little bit of background about like how high school here is different than um, the middle school will be. So some of the higher expectations associated with a being here. And, um, and then if there are questions, I'll be more than happy to answer questions uh, for everyone and we'll see uh, we'll see what we can do to help promote it. I'm recording the meeting so I will publish this to my YouTube channel probably I'll probably uh, clean it up tomorrow morning and post it so if your families want to see if or more questions come up please uh, please let me know I mean that's what we're here for want to make sure all your questions are answered so you can make the best and most informed decision possible as a family as to as to what you want your next steps to be so it's you know, Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about the program of studies first and the idea of what credits are, because I think that's important. But most of you who have gone through high school know about credits, but credits are units that measure success in classes, and you have to have a certain number to graduate. Okay, so the state of Connecticut requires a total of 25 credits to graduate. That's probably much higher than those of you who went to high school. Uh, in past years might have had to achieve the state's requirement and the way the credits are divvied up uh, are specified as well that we have flexibility of how we're going to divvy our credits up right? because we want to be sensitive to the fact that we're a magnet school we have a theme in our magnet school if you're coming to our magnet school we want to make sure you have a positive experience within that theme so credits are given to full year courses get a whole credit half year courses get a half a credit and so students can earn seven to eight, up to seven or eight credits per year. We haven't uh, finalized that decision yet. And you have to make that 25 threshold in order to graduate. Some will have more than that, but 25 is the minimum required to graduate. We'll have two uh, pathways in the school for the courses, and that is academic or honors. So we'll have, uh, they're all capable of getting students to college if that's where they want to go. They're all capable of preparing students for workforce employment if that's the route students want to go. But you'll have a choice of academic or honors. And you can pick and choose within that category. So say 
I feel like I'm a really strong math science student and I want to take honors algebra and I want to take uh, uh, honors biology. I would rather take academic level um, humanities classes. That's fine. I want to take all honors classes. That's fine. I want to take all academic classes. Totally fine. And we're going to use an open enrollment model here, meaning we don't decide what the students are going to take. The students decide what they're going to take. So we're not looking, we're not going to have teacher recommendations required to take an honors course or an academic course. That we think is if a student feels they're ready to take it and they want advice, we'll certainly give advice, but we won't be making the decision. So teachers will not be signing off on which course uh, students need to take, or we won't be having, well, you have to have this percentage grade to get into this course. That's a decision that'll be made by students and, and their families as to which pathway is best for them and where they feel they're prepared to go. So I'm gonna uh, briefly go through where the breakdown is. This is subject to revision at this point. Some of the stuff we are pretty solid on, some of it we are not. So in order to graduate, you're gonna, we have four credits of science we graduated, required to graduate. After all, we are a STEAM school and the S is the first one. So uh, all students will take biology in ninth grade, the bio or honors bio, chemistry in 10th, chemistry or honors chem physics or honors physics. We'll have an applied science research and engineering program for students who want to conduct research uh, to do that as well. And then we'll have electives and ECE electives and advanced placement electives. ECE is early college experience. So we'll have an opportunity for students to earn college credits. I'll talk a little bit about that a little further in to tell you who we're planning on partnering with uh, as part of their high school pathway. So if they want to go through, they can earn credits that will be ready for them to transfer right into college if that's the path they're going. They want to go to community college and credit can potentially transfer in if that's the route students want to go. Mathematics, there are four credits required of mathematics as well. So students, we have the honors path and we have some students that are in algebra right now. So if you're in algebra right now, you can go to algebra two next year. We'll have that as an honors track. And then students who are, are in math eight right now can take either algebra or honors algebra one, depending on which way they want to go. Again, so the choice is there. If you're ready to jump up ahead, if you're, in, you're taking math eight right now, you want to jump up into the algebra and honors track, that'll be available. Uh, so we're going to go algebra, algebra two, geometry, pre-calculus, and then calculus or stats and probability at, at the end of the pathway. So that will be the math pathway that's available on computer. Humanities, I'm grouping English and and um, social studies together as a humanities group. They are going to uh, have seven required credits for, for graduation. And we're going to do, we're going to try to, you know, we want, as a, as a magnet school, we want to be able to do things differently. So we're going to have two places, we're planning right now to have two places where students uh, can have their social studies and English classes together as a unit course. So we're going to have a Humanities 1 or Honors Humanities 1, which will cover English and Social Studies together in ninth grade. There'll be two teachers, uh, team taught, and the literature the students work on will be uh, in the context of the history of that period. So we're working on the details of that right now. Uh, that's something kind of different. And, um, and so we're, we've got a team that's going to work on planning what we want that to look like but it will not change the basic foundations of reading, high quality uh, classic literature, high quality writing in context of good social studies uh, curriculum. So that will be uh, the ninth grade program. That'll be worth two credits, right? Because you're taking the, the English and the math class together. For the students, you, you always hear ELA or LA. Okay, in, in high school, we call it English. So that, that's the transition, we call it English. Um, 10 will be more of a traditional setup. We'll have English 10 and civics. That's a, a, one of the state requirements. Everyone has to take civics. That'll be a year long class in civics. In 11th grade, the academic pathway will be American studies. Again, combination of English and social studies together. And we'll most, li most likely we'll have an advanced placement in English language or advanced placement US history and or the ECE, early college experience equivalents of those courses. In, in 12th grade, we're looking at a writing course which will be associated with the student's capstone project. Have a, the pro, students will have a project they will be required to do in order to graduate. Personal finance is also uh, required by the state of Connecticut. That's a half credit class. 
we're most likely we're most likely putting it in our humanities bucket. And then we have STEAM. So because that's our theme. Five credits. At least one must be a STEM first, two must be a humanities based because we have state requirement is nine STEM, nine humanities. So that they'll fall into that. We're looking at what we we were considering pathways, but we've decided we're going to have open enrollment on that as well. So students can pick the electives that they want to pick. We'll have different art classes, music classes. We'll have our engineering uh, pathway similar to our project. Those are project lead the way courses. So we'll have the, the same types of project lead the way courses, engineering's principle of engineering's biomedical science, computer science, environmental sustainability. We'll figure out which ones we're actually going to offer as we get closer. We'll have some integrated arts and technology courses like broadcast journalism. Our renovation will include a, a broadcast uh, a studio. So um, for the students, the current art annex is going to become our broadcast studio. So we'll be able to do podcasting and and uh, video and blogging and, and all that stuff right on, on campus. We'll have a technical theater program and other uh, early college electives as well. So PE and health, uh, one credit of PE, one credit of health. We've kind of divvied it up um, initially as, as half a year. There's gonna be flexibility in that. You can double up someplace. Uh, students different than what you have now, we have PE all year. PE would be a semester. So either the fall or the spring would be your PE class. And the same with the health as semester classes. We'll have a two credit world language requirement. So we'll have Spanish. Spanish will be the only language we're offering at Chase. Um, We'll have a heritage version too for native speakers, so they can focus more on writing and other communication. Um, and then we'll have advanced Spanish options for those that want to do that. Some of the high, some students might want to have three years of world language because some of the um, highly competitive colleges and universities require for it. So if you need that, we'll have that available most likely through ECE or, or through uh, one of our partners as well. One of the things that's going to look a little different here than uh, some other schools is we are going to have some competency requirements in order to graduate. Um, some of you have been involved in my portion of a graduate work that I've been doing. The students are going to have to demonstrate competency in their portrait of graduate attributes, which are problem solving, collaboration, communication, and uh, advocacy as a requirement for graduation. So they'll have to, and they'll have to do it in multiple places. So um, in 10th grade, our students have started making digital portfolios now. Uh, they will have to demonstrate their digital portfolio in 10th grade as a competency and requirement to progress to 11th grade. Okay. There's going to be an 11th grade humanities project. We're still uh, fleshing that out a little bit. And then students will also have a capstone project. That'll be another credit. So the capstone project will consist of two credits, one in English for the writing portion of it, and a one depending on what the student's interested in uh, throughout the school based on which expertise of faculty they'll need to do that capstone project. And of course, they'll have to demonstrate their competencies on our portrait uh, rubrics that we are developing. And um, that'll be a, um, a demonstration as well. So there'll be multiple opportunities, multiple courses to demonstrate their, their competencies. We are going to do dual credit opportunities. So students will be able to take college level courses. Some of them may be taught by our teachers here. Some of them might be taught um, online by uh, professors at the respective uh, universities or colleges. So POST will be definitely be a partner with us. Uh, Naugatuck Valley will be a partner with us. And if students want to take a class at Naugatuck Valley, it's, it's across the street. So they can just go across the street. And if there's a course they want to take there, that, that will also meet their high school requirement and they want to take it there. They can go over and take a, a live class there or they can take online classes. We'll have space in the school uh, for support and help for students who want to take online classes as part of their, their completion. And obviously any of our online courses are college level courses. So they'll get dual credit for that, high school credit and college credit. They can take that credit with them wherever they go. We will most likely partner with UConn as well. That That is not... That's a little more infancy right now, so that's not a guarantee that's going to happen, but that's in its infancy of development. Okay, attendance policy. Attendance matters at high school, and I need everyone to understand that attendance does matter, and uh, you are accountable for attendance for your credits, to earn your credits. So um, 
this is this is uh, this is I think important in consideration because students need to be on to school on time and they need to be in their classes on time. So our attendance policy will most likely look like um, three tardies, unexcused tardies, uh, is the equivalent of an absence. Okay, and um, nine absent, and we're going to use the uh, state-based. Uh, descriptions around chronic absenteeism, which is 10%. So 10% uh, of a semester is nine absences. So nine, more than nine absences will be a denial of credit situation uh, because we have to hold high standards. Students need to be in school and they need to be in school on time. And that's and that whether that on time is getting to the buildings on time in the morning and or getting to class in the middle of the day on time. So high standard we think it's very important to have high standards at the high school level so i think this is just important to know that up front most most schools have some sort of attendance policy in place at the high school level and, and no one ever you know shares that when they're pitching to students like when they come to us we're going to be transparent and honest we want you to know what you're what what's expected at our school so the attendance does matter we are going to continue to expand our athletics program uh, this is a lot of work in progress. We got a bunch of questions from the students about athletics when we when we talked to them as well. By the way, it was one of the coolest things. We had all the eighth graders in this room at the same time, and uh, like 250 of them, and it was uh, the energy was really cool to see them uh, see what we were up to and and talk about it. So uh, we're planning to keep the same athletics and expand the ones that we currently have. There are students that might want to do athletics uh, that we don't offer. So uh, Mr. Christensen, who is our athletic director, is working on co-op opportunities. Uh, we did check with the CIAC, which is the governing body for athletics for the state of Connecticut public schools, and I think in private schools as well. Um, and they said, you, you have, if your school is offering an athletics program, that's the one the students have to participate in. They can't participate in one in, in their home district. So we'll most likely try to partner with a school to co-op for athletics that we don't have, such as uh, if people want to play football. I think the two that we were thinking would have the highest interest would be football and track. We don't still have facilities and capabilities of running those programs. So if students wanted to play those sports, we would co-op with another school in the area to be the partner school so our students could play if that's what they want uh, to do. Uh, we'll, we'll still have the whole range of clubs and, and organizations that we have. We'll have the high school versions of that. Uh, we'll we'll add a few teachers, but um, again, our numbers are going to stay relatively the same. We're going to maintain probably around 600 for next year, just because we're down one major building for renovation right now. And then as that one opens up, we'll we'll feed the um. So the the way the campus will look is this building that you're in right now will be the high school, the equivalent of the high school building. St. Margaret's, which is the building on the top of the hill, will be the middle school building. And Camp Hall, where sixth and seventh grade is, and some of seventh grade is right now, will be our STEAM building. So our middle school kids will come down to that building for STEAM. Our high school kids will go up to that building for STEAM and, and so on. And then the field house will remain in the field house um, as well. I'm going to pause now. And uh, I'm sure there are plenty of questions that people have. If you have a question, I'd love to help answer them. And, and uh, give you information that can help you with the process. Go ahead. Yeah, so we are going to be going to quarters and semesters because we need we need to be doing that. I think in our transition, our eighth grade next year uh, might still be on uh, trimesters for their electives, but that may or may not happen. It's, it's going to be very, this is a very fluid process right now. So the, everything's on hold until we know how many high school students we're going to have. Once we know how many high school students we're going to have, then we can say, okay, this is how many middle school students we can have. So all the lotteries are in flux right now. Well, there's no lottery for the high school. It's students who are currently here are eligible to come, no lottery, and that's the group we're currently taking. We haven't discussed taking students from outside uh, the current students at this point yet. I never, you never know. We've only been at this for one week. So the, the rules might change at some point, but that's the current plan right now. Current students are the ones eligible in ninth grade. Depending on how many want to come, that will then determine 
what we take for eight, seven, and six, because I have to staff everything appropriately to make sure everything fits. And the goal total is going to be around uh, 600. So I answer your question, because I know I bird walked a little bit on that one. Go ahead. Um, is the time going to be the same for the high school that... Uh, yeah. Yeah. So middle school and high school will function at the same time because we're going to have shared staff and shared faculty. So the schools will need to operate at the same time. At the current, the current thinking, although again, this could be subject to change too, is to keep the same hours we are currently running. And the reason being there are two large schools like right here that go a little earlier and a lot earlier. And to go at the same time as one of them will cause, I think, a major traffic situation which can be a challenge for families. So I think we're probably going to stay on, on the same schedule we're on for hours wise right now. But again, that's subject to further discussion. Okay, that was a question too, okay. So that we are trying to figure out right now. That That is, a, that is we, we know we need to have kids have grades that are accessible, to other schools and 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 post secondary schools, what it's going to look like uh, that is uh, a big project we're working on right now, and that's that's me and the executive leadership team trying to figure this out. But we're very sensitive to the fact that we know our grades have to be very accessible uh, to others looking at them and trying to know what they need. So it might wind up. And my feeling is there's probably going to be a revision of what the middle school grades look like in the process that we develop the high school grades. So we want a continuum of what we're doing. One of the things we will certainly be doing is grading on standards. Um, regardless, uh, we want to know that kids know, understand, and can do the specific skills and have the specific knowledge we want them to have. Um, we will keep behavioral stuff separate. So we don't want kids getting grades for completion of homework. That's something that we, we do separately right now in terms of our respect for others or the homework grades that teachers give. We'll probably keep those kind of things compartmentalized as well. What it totally looks like, um, ask me in a month and I'll give you a better answer. Good. Um, so you said the, the size of the school is basically gonna stay the same with the amount of kids? Mm -hmm. No, because just my thought was like, if you're adding the high school, there's going to be extra um, kids and the whole like drop off and pick up, you know, it. Yeah. Know, there's going to be more like. Yeah, but. Drop off but, sorry, and pick up is already crazy. <laughs> but at some point, our high school kids will be driving too, right? Yeah. So they won't have to be in the drop off line because right. they, they'll just go and park. And and so, so at some point, we'll actually. Uh, look at some of those moms are on their eyes, but the kids driving right now. <laughs> uh, but that will actually, I think, will actually reduce traffic on camp. I mean, the cars will still be coming, yeah. but they won't be waiting in line to get places. They'll be going right to parking spaces. Yeah. So part of the renovation, so part of the renovation will be to there are two increases in parking areas. One is down by the field house where the tennis courts are right now. The tennis courts are going away. It's all going to become parking lot. And then up in the front where the front parking lot is, that is going to be expanded and the bus loop is going to actually go around one of the buildings. So that lot is going to be significantly increased in size as well. I'm not sure about that yet. Oh. We haven't we haven't finalized that yet. That's probably not likely. So kids driving will probably go down there and then drop off will be someplace else so we can keep the flow moving along. No, I was just saying, are they going to do the same busing too? Like how we have the busing, like cluster yeah. stops? Yeah, cluster stops. We, we have talked to Waterbury about the potential of doing corner stops for the city of Waterbury. So that's not going to change for out of town. So we'll have the, um, the depot stops for out of town. But so, so we're, we're trying, you know, it's, it's, um, it's a, it's a still a, pan, it's a pandemic issue. Like we can't get enough bus drivers because Waterbury is the town that hosts the magnet school is responsible for their own transportation. Uh, so we provide transportation for the surrounding communities. And then Waterbury is actually contracting with us to provide the transportation for Waterbury as well, but they could actually theoretically be providing their own transportation. So we bill Waterbury for that transportation. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Any students, you have questions? You've heard it twice now? Mm -hmm. No, no, we don't say anything with all these adults here. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Thank you. We're, we're, very, we're, we're very excited. And I think this offers a great opportunity for our students um, you know, to create that continuity that I think is so valuable in education. So, uh, yeah, go ahead. I know. They're torn because they have good questions here. They like to hear, but yet if we've already either paid for or yeah, I and I totally understand that, and, and I I tried to say that in, in the message I sent out, like, um, yeah, and and I totally get that, and I know that some are not going to come if they knew in September, the story would be different right now, but um, but I think you know, that those are challenging decisions that unfortunately have to be made. How are they going to like if they go to a different school and they want to come back? So at that point, if there's a lottery available for that grade, you'd have to enter the lottery and um, and get back the same way anybody else would come back in. So you own the seat until the school does. You can't be at the school right now. It, right, you know, prior it was till eighth grade. Now it's through twelfth grade. So the student owns the seat until twelfth grade if they want it. But if they leave, then they're giving that seat up to somebody else. Just in terms of process, you receive the parent square message. The eighth grade families have received the parent square message. Just fill out the form, uh, submit it, and that is your seat. You, that's your acceptance of the seat. There's been a couple of people that have some issues with signing the form. So the issue is uh, people putting spaces, I think, in places that shouldn't be spaces. So just check that. But if there's a problem, just call the school, and I can check to see if you been inputted correctly, and if you give me a verbal okay and everything else is already there, I'll I'll do it that way. Someone have a question in the back? Yeah, go ahead. So, so that's a totally different horror story. <laughs> um, we had a construction. So when you when you do a project of this scope, you you contract with a construction management company to do the work. So the construction management country, company we had worked with uh, decided that they were not capable of doing the project. And so there was a lot of legal, the lawyers and the lawyers, and one of the other companies that bid for the project took on the project. So we didn't have to re-go out to bid because that would have been a potential situation where I had to re-go out to bid. So they're taking it. But of course, you know, it's like the, the, the wounded bear. You know, it's like, oh, they're they're in a position now, but we're gonna try to gouge them for some stuff. So then there's all that negotiation back and forth because they know we need someone to do the project and they know they're in a good position. So we're working through that. So that building was supposed to start in September. It's probably gonna start either late summer or September of, of next year. It's gonna take a little over a year to complete that building. When that building is complete, it will be large enough to hold the middle school as designed for us. For six twelve, but you know we have to play numbers games all all of the time. So right now, for example, are we want about one hundred ten to one hundred fifteen per class? That's kind of the target size of the class. So basically, one ten to one twenty five, I think, will be the size of any given class. But as you know, our seventh grade, our current seventh grade, is like two hundred something. So we have a but we'll have these bubbles. Our current Sixth grade is 130 something. So that bubble's a little bit smaller. So when we push through, at one point it was like 200, 200, 200. And we're going to have to take a class of like 25 one year to make the numbers work. But we're not going to have to do that. We'll have reasonable class sizes uh, every year because of the way it worked out this past year. We are also obligated by the state to, um, to have the, the, the law on magnet schools is you uh, can have up to 55 percent of your student population from any one town doesn't matter what the town is it's just one town 55 percent if you exceed 55 percent the state cuts the reimbursement in half basically so uh, I, I think someone's trying to get in I'm not sure and now it's closed our door so um we have to be very careful of, of that balance Waterbury is our primary town um, at, at about 52% this year. And our second highest town is Naugatuck. And Naugatuck is about um, 16 to 18% of our total population. And then 
where the other 27 towns make up the rest. Go ahead. Um, any like, uh, like dances and stuff like that, is that just going to be for the high school or is it going to? Yeah, so we're not going to have sixth graders with seniors in high schools at the same place. They'll have their, <laughs> those types of things will be separate. Okay. I'm sure there are certain things that are age appropriate for all kids to be involved in. And then there are certain things that that's only appropriate for high school. Okay. Like none of the sixth graders are going to be allowed to go with a junior to the prom. That's not going to be one of the choices. <laughs> that won't be one of the choices. Go ahead. Yeah. It's a no, it's going to be a numbers game again. So depending on how many high school students we have, maybe half of eighth grade would be in here and half would be over in camp. But I, I can't answer that question until I get my numbers and, and start putting those pieces together. Theoretically, as you go to 9, 10, 11, 12, you have Yes, absolutely. I mean, that's pretty standard. Like, there's going to be one band class. So if you're a freshman in band and you're a senior in band, you're in the same class because that's how those groups work or, or chorus or orchestra and likely art classes and, and um, some of our engineering classes will be. We're not going to be able to offer every engineering class every year. There's only so many students. So if we did a biomedical one year, maybe then we skip a year. So then the sophomores and juniors might be taking that at the same time together. But that's fairly common in high school to have mixed grade level classes. I'm I'm not opposed to it. You know that's circumstance based, and we can we can uh, do that. We want to make sure we meet the needs of all students. And if someone's prepared to do something, just like we're saying, we think some of our kids are going to be prepared to take college level classes. Well, maybe some of our middle school students will be ready to take high school classes. Every once in a while, you have a very advanced math student, for example. That's that's one of the most common situations. And the beauty is, you can be here and just come to the high school and take the geometry if you're or the algebra two if you're ready to take that in eighth grade or seventh grade. We'll have those available. Yeah, so that that is highly, highly dependent on on what happens. So right now, the um, we are trending higher percentage of Waterbury students are wanting to stay based on the ones that have been submitted so far. So what that's going to do is it's going to trickle down. So we're gonna have to take a lower percentage of Waterbury students at the um, the sixth or seventh grade level to make sure our numbers stay in balance. But it, again, I, I have to do spreadsheets all the time to make all this work <laughs> and, and figure out what the numbers are and, and where people are coming and going from. So, um, if students going to take it in Naugatuck, my guess is probably we might have transportation, but they might be able to just walk over there too, because it's it's there's sidewalks the whole way, and and there's there's crossworks and roads. Uh, post any classes for post will be online classes, so people will not be going on campus post. Post University actually, there are nineteen thousand students, and only two thousand are on campus. They have 17,000 students that are online students. I didn't know that until we actually went to meet with them. And a lot, a lot of, of high schools in Connecticut are using Post as their partner. I, I know New Milford is putting Post in because I'm working with their principal on a project. And I met a principal of a charter school in Bridgeport. They're using Post. So Post has got really good traction. I think they're, they've been very smart in the way they're offering their dual enrollment classes to schools and making them accessible. Uh, and, you know, it's going to depend on numbers, too. Like, sometimes a class might be taught by one of our teachers here and get the and get the post credit. Some of them might just be online classes with posts, so we'll have a place for students to work for those classes so they have a space where they can take those classes. And uh, same with Naugatuck Valley, they have online, or they can go over to Naugatuck Valley and take the classes there. Yes, yes. Uh, so I can't say for certain at this point, um, what we'll be picking up and what might be picked up by the student, not sure at this point, but we'll we'll try to figure something out and we'll certainly have a, a way to support students who want to do it, who might, might find it a struggle. Go ahead. So, um, yeah, it's all certification driven. So 
it really that's a very much it depends uh, situation because some of my teachers are certified K six, so they they stay at sixth grade. They can't go anyplace. Some of my teachers are certified four eight, so they have to be in the four eight range. And some of my teachers are certified seven twelve, and so it it, it all depends. So I have so I'm on I have six. So for example, I have six sixth grade teachers currently. Four of them are certified K-6, two of them are certified 712. So one of them might be flopping up to a different place when I have a smaller sixth grade next year. But not sure yet. You know, <laughs> it's, I'm also talking to teachers regularly to see what their interests are and what they want to do as well. Any of our latecomers, any questions, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah, we're, we're going to phase this in. So this this would be the first. So th this is the cool thing, too. Like, you, you can be the first. This is actually the first twice, right? Because this is the first full group. This is the first. It's not the first group promoted from eighth grade, but it's the first group that's been here all three years that's being promoted. And they will be the first high school uh, graduating class. I'm very excited because I have my robe from when I got my doctorate. And... Uh, I haven't really had a, an occasion to wear it recently. <laughs> so uh, I'm looking forward to pulling that out with a funny hat. And everything. Is there any chance of like, not working in full I don't think so. As far as I'm concerned at this point, we have enough students to, to green light this as it is right now. And I'm sure we're going to have more people. As more people find out more information, there'll probably be some more signups associated um, with the feedback we're getting right now. But at this point, we, we have two full sections set already. So I think, I, I'm guessing we'll get to 75 or 100. That's that's probably my prediction of where we're going to wind up. And I think that's a great size class to start with and work with. And people, like word is getting out about this. We had some lady at the front today knocking on the door. How do I sign up for the lottery for ninth grade? Like, we don't have a lottery for ninth grade, but there people want it. So people... I guess our reputation is that people are are very interested in the work we're doing here. Oh, absolutely. Promotion ceremony for eighth grade. Yep. That doesn't change. That will never change. That's a that's a rite of passage for kids. And we would absolutely keep that tradition going. And it's and it's it's a natural break because I think some people will come to us from six to eight, and some students might want to go to technical high schools or other private schools. So People will come and go, and that, that will be a natural part of this community. So we want to celebrate student success at eighth grade and, and again at um, 12. I know people, this is a total aside. Um, I have put my request date in for our promotion ceremony. Uh, I haven't heard back yet, so I'm, I'm still waiting on that. As soon as I have it, uh, I will let everyone know. I can tell you the times, though. If you're on 8-1, it'll be at 9 a.m. And if you're in 8-2, it'll be at 10-45. Uh, the 12th. I think we might be in the clear, so. Uh... Yeah, 8 a.m. 8 a.m. We start. Yeah, uh, I, I think... I think I inherited some uh, wasted of time stuff. And so we, we really had to clean that up a little bit. And, and no matter what time you start, there's going to be a group that's going to be late. So uh, <laughs> that's just the reality of any school. So uh, we're, we're sticking with eight. Uh, I think that that works well. It's a natural start time and, and everyone can clock their clock on it. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. So ninth grade students can will mostly have J either freshman teams or JV teams next year uh, until we grow enough students to have varsity level uh, teams. If uh, if we're offering if there's a sport that we don't offer, we will work on co-oping with another school. So if the student wants to play that sport, we can have a place for them to go play that sport at another school. All right. So we will, yeah, we'll have soccer, basketball, cross country, 
girls volleyball, the ultimate frisbee, so baseball, softball. Those are the ones we're currently offering. The most likely uh, co-ops will be for football and for track. Yeah. No, 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 they, they're separate. Yeah, so, so at some point, like the basketball, we'll have four basketball teams practicing at the same, for the same season. But uh, we'll probably have different times associated with that. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me. If you want to talk about anything else, always uh, available. If you need help with the um, the form completion process, let me know. And um, you know, happy to help you with the decision making progress. If you need someone to talk to about it. Okay.